Hi everyone, welcome back to Let's Tax the Pays tutorial videos on a cloud accounting software. Uh, today we're going to be looking at QuickBooks Online and projects. Now this is quite a lengthy video because there's quite a lot involved. Um, well, so I'll try and be as quick as I can, obviously, but explain as much as possible as well. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you're returning, again, don't forget hit, forget to hit that subscribe button. It allows us just to understand that our tutorial videos are helping the small business community. Um, so let's get right into it. Now I'm in the dashboard of a test account. It's not the demo sample account um, for projects. Uh, so as you can see here, we've got the login dashboard. It's nothing really. It's just some invoices that have been thrown around. Um, so what you need to do is you need to make sure that the customer is set up initially um, before you can allow any projects to be assigned to them. So the way you would do that is obviously go to sales, customers, new customer. Now if I put myself in and my email address, been in once already two there you go um, so now I've created myself I've obviously had to create a second one um, because you can't have two names of exactly the same that goes the same with customers and suppliers so if you have a customer that's also a supplier you just have to change the name in one of them ever so slightly by adding a one or just put a dash SUP if they're the supplier or CUS at the customer it just allows the, the system just doesn't allow uh, duplicate names even though they're in two different lists so now we've created the customer this company has quoted me a decent amount of money to do a project uh, so now they want to track the income versus expenditure so what we need to do is we need to add a project first and as you can see we've got projects here so it says add your first project now if you haven't done this before then um, it will come up with this. If you've added other projects, it will just say it will come up with this window. So the project name, we'll just name label it as test. The client is myself. Due date, so this is the date that the, due, the project is due to be completed. So if I said for the end of this month, assign it to me, and this is a test project. To show profitability, but you can obviously put in there what the product, what the project is. If it's to do with building, if it's to do with conversions, whatever it may be for your industry, and you just want to see, right? I've got this sales invoice that I've got to give to the client, um, and now I want to track all the purchases. So you can label what the details of the purchase are to anything you like. It's a free text box. Um, after that, you press save. And you can see here it tells you to follow the money so if this is an estimate for extra work or invoices or expenses or bills that you're paying out it allows you to show um, and track what you're entirely doing you can see the profitability the non billable time and time expenses so if you're putting in um, if you're putting in timesheets and, and wages and everything else you can put those in as well so we have the transactions so initially you could do an estimate for the project um, whatever that may be but for this I'm going to say we've already agreed uh, in writing that the project is going to be um, for services sales test project and it's going to be for 25,000 pounds plus VAT okay so I can save and send that invoice but for this instance I'm just going to save and close so that's now saved the invoice to the project it's also saved the invoice inside the system as well but it's just assigned it to the project and if I go into the project reports and view the profit project profitability 
it shows me here that the profitability so far is £25,000 because we've put the sales invoice in. So now, for instance, if we wanted to put in some purchase invoices, so we've spent some money trying to get um, some suppliers um, to buy some equipment um, for the project, this is how you would actually create the purchase invoice and assign it to the project. So the supplier, the date of the su supply, so whatever that may be, so we'll say for the tent, purchases because it's a cost of sale, um, and you can put the invoice number in, or any other detail that you want to put in. The amount I've spent is 5,000 pounds plus VAT. And now, this is the option here which allows you to sign it to the project, which is customer slash project. So if I now type, start typing my name, you can see I've got Darren Fagan to test. So if I select that, that will then automatically assign it to my project and it will then automatically change the profitability of the project. So if we then go save and close, you can see there that I've added some more uh, expenses. So now we're gonna go to uh, the, cust the projects themselves. So you can go to the tab on the projects and it will show you what's in, in the projects that are in progress or if they're to-dos and, and what's the statuses are of the project. So let's go to the options, view task and details, which shows you the tasks and details. Now, tasks are particular tasks that you need to complete. So if you're using this as a task board, then you can do that. You can just click on the name and it will come into the project itself and you can see the transactions there. So we've got the invoice, the sales invoice, and we've got the bill payment there as well. So if we now go to the project reports and click on view, you can then see, right, I've done 25,000 pounds plus fat of sales, and I've had 5,000 pounds plus fat of purchases. So my overall net profit is 20,000 pounds for this project. Now you can repeat this process over and over and over again. So for this particular project, if there's more sales invoices, you just create the sales invoice. If there's more bills and expenses, you just at the end where it says that customer and project, and it's the same for expenses. So if I went to do a new expense, so say you've gone to screw fix or you've gone somewhere and just bought something um, with the debit card um, just to do the project. So it's not a big invoice, it's one of those little invoices. You can do exactly the same thing. And you'll just have this customer slash project at the end. As long as you select that, and you can go through the list of clients, and as long as you select the actual project uh, and whatever name you've given it, it will then assign it to that project. And then you can see how profitable your project is becoming. Um, and also you can do the same with wages. So when you come to do a bank payment out for wages, um, say for instance, you're part of the CIS industry and you've got certain subcontractors on certain jobs, you can assign their payment for that week or that month to the project. You can also assign part of it to the project. Now what I mean by that is, if you had, uh, for instance, a purchase invoice, that not everything was for um, the project, some of it was just general stock. What you can do is you can actually split the invoice. So if I go to purchases, invoice number uh, 45678, and two thousand pounds of that invoice plus VAT was for the project. So I scroll down, select the project. That's fine. But then you might have bought some other stuff that was not for the project, but just for your general stock. And say that was a thousand pounds plus VAT. You can see here I have to select the custom project every time. So you can split out your purchase invoices or your bills and your expenses. So part, part of it might be for the project, part of it might be for stock for your van, or stock for the office, or office stationery. It might have been, there might have been two parts to it. So you can split this out. So if you really want to delve into the numbers with reference to what you've spent, you can split this out and do multiple lines. It's still the same invoice. It's still 3,000 pounds plus VAT. It's just you've decided that you're gonna split this out so you can track your projects in a much, much stricter fashion 
uh, than rather generalization. So that invoice was for everything. Um, if it wasn't, then you can do this. And if I hit save and close, you'll see it will only attach the 2000 pounds to the project. It won't attach the 3000, so it won't make my expenses for the project 3000 pounds. If I go to the project report, it's only attached 2000 pounds. So that was at five, it's now at seven. So you can see by doing that, I've made my profitability projection um, very accurate. So I can make sure that if I am doing this in a strict fashion, I can make sure that these projects are really giving me some real detailed information. They're giving me um, what I want to see. It's not a generalization where I say, oh, that purchase was all for the project when might have it, some of it might not. If you're not too fussed about how strict you are and you just want to see you're generally making a profit, then by all means, just do the one line invoice in for the project. But it won't give you a true picture around your project. So I would always split it out. If you know what's being purchased for the project, maybe just do that as an its own invoice. So do it as a one order and then do a second order. There's a little bit extras that you need to do, but being able to find out whether a project is profitable or not uh, for your business might mean the difference between the, the business surviving or the business um, ceasing um, by being able to do these reporting and making sure that you are making a profit on each project. If it then comes to a case that you're, you're still struggling, then that's a different scenario. It's not the project itself, it might be other uh, operating factors outside of the project. So you have to just make sure that you are quite strict and quite accurate with these projects because it will be a very, very distinctive um, way to determine whether your business is moving forward or not. If you're making a loss on every project, then you have to change something. But if you're not being truly accurate with the project, then you don't know whether truly the, pro the project is making money. It could be that I can make every project, I can make every project on here lose money if I just put all the purchases for that project, whether they were for the project or not, um, against, that, against this particular test project, uh, which is not gonna meet, show me any meaningful data, it just means I've made a loss. Well, unless I've been accurate and strict with it, then um, I'm just gonna be running around in circles. So that is all we're going to show today with reference to projects. If it's something that you really want to delve into and you really want to move forward with, drop me a couple of comments about what you're looking for out of the projects um, with reference to the features and functionality. If there's anything that you think I've missed, let me know. I'm not perfect. I'm only a human being like yourselves. I use the software on a daily basis. I generally know how it works, but I'm not, I'm not professing to be an absolute master of the software. I still learn stuff every day like everyone else. So that's all we've got time for today. As I said at the start of the video, if you're new to the videos, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification as well so you get notified whenever we upload a video. Um, if you're returning and you like the videos, subscribe again. It just gives us an idea that we're the videos we're doing are helping the small business market because that's what we're designed for. I spoke to a couple of suppliers, uh, QuickBooks being one and Free Agent being the other, um, about the software, about our videos. Free Agent really like our videos. Uh, they find that they are on a much more personal level. Um, QuickBooks, I said to them about your, you leave people to do it themselves. And they said, well, yeah, it's it's not something that we can get involved in. So this really helps people moving forward. And with this age that the TV adverts and everything else that are coming out about using this software and making tax digital, I think these videos will be very, a very, very good resource tool for you moving forward. And if you wanna get in contact, get in contact. Let us know how you find the videos. Let us know if you like the videos. Uh, we always like to hear positive and negative feedback. It's not a problem. So until next time, have fun, try this new feature out if you've got it. Um, not all the solutions have this feature. Uh, if it's something that you're struggling with, again, like I said, get in contact. So we will see you soon and have fun.